From George of the Jungle to the Whale, Brendan Fraser had quite the career. But do you know exactly how he's become the comeback king? Let's get into it. Can you name Brendan's debut film? If you guess 1991's Dogfight, you'd be right. He had a pretty minor role there, playing a character who wasn't even deemed important enough to be named. Seriously, the credits on Dogfight simply list him as Sailor Number One, but he picked up the ball quickly. By the very next year, he'd already nabbed his first leading role in School Ties. I thought it was also gonna be my last one, for all I knew. Oh, no worries, Brendan. That same year, he would also go on to star in Encino Man. For Brendan, every role that he landed back then felt like life and death, because those are the stakes of a young person's ambition. But his career was only just beginning. Obvi. How many of you remember that theme song? George, George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. That's right. We're talking about the 1997 Disney live-action film, George of the Jungle. George is the, the original babe in the woods. Or the role that truly turned Brendan Fraser into a household name. It got mixed reviews from critics, but audiences loved it, helping it to bring in $170 million against a $55 million budget. As a Tarzan spoof based on the animated series from the 1960s, Brendan's wardrobe really wasn't much more than a loincloth, and he recalls how he was waxed and starved of carbohydrates for the role. It even got so bad that I could not remember my pin number. Apparently, his brain was misfiring so bad that it just wasn't coming to him. <laughs> Banging on this thing. But even this role was nothing compared to what was coming. If you thought George of the Jungle was big news, this next one made him the star of his own franchise. The Mummy, released in 1999, was a massive hit, pulling in a whopping 416.4 million against an $80 million budget. It had a little bit of, um, not danger per se, but some risk taking to it. This role was a special kind of challenge for Brendan, who had to do his own fighting stunts and even ride camels across the searing hot desert while filming in Morocco. Will we survive? Still, as difficult as filming was, Brendan says, I loved making that movie. You could really see his passion for the project too, considering he went on to star in two of the movie's sequels. But if you want to show your passion for our channel, you don't need to ride a camel to do it. Just click that subscribe button while we move on to discussing a few of Brendan's other beloved roles. Back in the early 2000s, Brendan Fraser was like, everywhere. He was cast in everything from the Harold Ramey's comedy Bedazzled in 2000 to 2003's Looney Tunes Back in Action. His role in the Academy Award-nominated Gods and Monsters earned Brendan more respect from film critics, but he'd also receive cameos in The Simpsons and King of the Hill. Where's all my swanks? He became the first American-born actor to be inducted into Canada's Walk of Fame in 2006. But by then, the roles had really started to dry up, and the movies he was being offered really weren't that good. I mean, take a look at his role in 2008's Journey to the Center of the Earth. So, what happened? Well... This first blow took place in 2003, when Brendan was touched inappropriately by the former president of the HFPA, Philip Burke. Brendan said that he felt ill and like he was going to cry. He decided not to go public about it at the time because he didn't want to contend with how much that made him feel or for it to become part of his narrative. So Brendan's reps asked Burke for a written apology, but Burke responded with a weak, if I've done anything that upset Mr. Fraser, it was not intended. After this, Brendan noticed that the roles really started to dry up for him. So much so that he actually wondered if he had been blacklisted because of the letter. Brendan became incredibly depressed after this, even blaming himself for what happened. On top of the depression, Brendan had a few personal issues to work through. He'd always been willing to perform whatever stunts he needed to do, but that was starting to catch up with him while he was filming for the third Mummy movie in 2008. Like they said, I was playing hurt. He'd receive injury after injury on set, even needing to get a laminectomy. It was a lot, yeah, it was a lot of fighting, a lot of fall down, go boom. Several other surgeries came in the following years, which really affected his ability to do the action-packed roles he'd become famous for. Around the time I made that movie, it was sort of a fundamental shift in my approach. And that wasn't even the end of it. In 2007, Brendan divorced his wife after nine years of marriage. Ouch. But his bad luck wouldn't last forever. 
In 2016, Brendan gave his first interview in years, and it was a little hard to watch. Brendan just seemed so depressed. Why did we not see Brendan in that trailer? <laughs> Even mentioning that he felt pigeonholed or boxed as an actor. The whole thing actually went sort of viral, and people felt so bad for him wondering what had happened. Well, as it turns out, Brendan had just lost his mother to cancer days before that interview was filmed. Not only that, but he was uncomfortable with the setup, which left him wondering, damn, this is the way it's done now? Brendan explained this in the same 2018 interview with GQ, where he went public about his experience with Philip Burke. This interview also went viral, as it helped us all understand what he'd been through. After these enlightening interviews, the internet was cheering to see Brendan again, and it wouldn't be long before we'd get our wish. Brendan lent his voice to the character of Robot Man in Titans in 2018, even going on to reprise the role in Doom Patrol. Some saw this as a sign of his big return, as fans on TikTok started using the hashtag Brennaissance. Every time I hear that, I want to look at the ceiling. <laughs> oh look, there's Rick O'Connell. Oh look, there's George of the Jungle. In 2021, it was announced that he'd be playing the villain Firefly in the upcoming Batgirl movie, but but as excited as we were all to see it, the project would later be cancelled in 2022. Yet, the Renaissance was only getting started. When you think about the Renaissance, the first movie that probably comes to mind is The Whale. This was actually his first leading role since 2013. Brendan was cast after director Darren Aronofsky had spent 10 years looking for the perfect leading man, but he knew Brendan could fill that role after seeing him in only one trailer. To be honest though, I, I had never really seen any of his films. And what convinced Darren he'd be right for the role? I think once a movie star, always a movie star. Apparently, Darren hadn't even heard about the Renaissance, which just goes to show how right the time was for Brendan's return. You can probably already already imagine how the internet responded too. Everybody loved to see Brendan back. And we aren't just talking about the internet either. When The Whale premiered at the Venice International Film Festival, he received a six minute long standing ovation that reduced him to tears. And not only that, but Brendan received his first Oscar nom for Best Actor in The Whale. He was given the Tribute Award from the Toronto International Film Festival. That's a wonderful affirmation. It's new to me. And although he'd also received a Best Actor nom from the Golden Globes, he decided not to attend because of their association with the HFPA, joking, my mother didn't raise a hypocrite. But for all the praise Brendan's been receiving for The Whale, he's tried to stay humble. I'll take nothing for granted, knowing how far-reaching this journey has been. And what a journey it's been, Brendan. He's definitely come a long way from forgetting his pin number. What would you say is your favorite Brendan Fraser movie? There's so many good ones to choose from, but we're hoping you can give us your pick down in the comments section. And we're coming for you if it's Journey to the Center of the Earth.